want to talk to you about the Ruggles show. The what? The Ruggles show. There is a wonderful record that they have. We, we did one of the first network shows, East Coast and West Coast, at the very beginning of television. I did 172 episodes. We worked 172 weeks to do it. And it was quite something. Uh, but let me tell you how I got the job to start with. Suddenly I got a call from my agent that they were doing an interview. A friend had called and said I should get over for this interview to ABC. What was an ABC? Oh, yes, that, that's a broadcast company, right? It wasn't very big at that time. And so we, I, I drove over and I found the place and they let me in, the guard let me in and everything was fine. And there was this little group of people just standing around this huge camera or television camera, you know, that they had on wheels and they were, there was somebody that they were interviewing, <clears throat> but she was not supposed to talk. Uh, nobody was supposed to, I thought that was really weird, but I, I walked up to the group of people and gave my name and a friend of mine was there who had, I, the assistant director, and he said, how are you doing, you know, we kind of thing. And so they were getting all of the picture up in the booth. It was, they were not down, that was the thing with television. You did not have the director right next to you. He was up in a booth, could be three buildings away as far as you knew. So I'm standing there and this man looks at me and they interview this girl who I was up against several for several uh, parts. So it was my turn. And I was supposed to go in, stand there and look at the camera when they told me one turn to the left, one more turn to the left, one more turn to the left, and not say anything. Well, that was the oddest interview I had ever heard in my life, but that's what I was supposed to do, and that, that's what I was going to do. Well, my friend, who was the assistant director there, would have none of it. He started to talk to me, and I said, shh, I'm not supposed to talk. No, 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 let me do what, what I'm supposed to do. So, and then he said, one turn, and I would turn. He says, no, turn the other way. Oh, but I turned the other way. So we had a conversation, uh, sort of voce, voce, I think they say, on, uh, of this whole thing. And I said, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing this. And when we finished that, I walked up to him. And I said, shame on you. I was, you were there. And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway... I got chosen. Of course I did. I was given something. I could talk about something. I could do something. And he knew it. So I get a call that they would like me to be on the show at ABC. We started to call ABC the Almost Broadcasting Company. The reason being that Mutual uh, Broadcast had dropped out for TV and we had NBC and CBS. That was all. So here was ABC, brand new, <clears throat> and <clears throat> so it was ABC, which was brand new, and we met on this stage that was very, very old. It was where they shot a picture in 1929. The first talking picture was made there, if you can imagine. I mean, it was, it was something else. Anyway, we joined together for a reading of the script. And we, um, we sat around with this, and, and uh, it's in my book, by the way, there are pictures of us doing this. We sat around and <clears throat> chatted with each other and read some of the script, what we were going to do. And then in the middle of all of this, now remember ABC was very new, we got a knock on the door of the big room that we were meeting in, and it was the photographer. What photographer? We didn't know anything about a photographer. Well, <clears throat> they had sent over a photographer to be photographed, to be in all the magazines and the newspapers, every place. But they hadn't told us. So none of us were really dressed for any kind of photo shoot. And we're, what, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So we did the best we could because we knew show business enough. And <clears throat> I said, uh, I said, you know, it might be fun 
if we have Daddy uh, Ruggles, Charlie Ruggles, I'll tell him about him in a minute, uh, why don't we do a scene of me across his knees and him spanking his daughter? Who knows? It might, might be good. You know that picture went around the world. Uh, how funny how things happen. So anyway, we got that done. And the next thing you know, we got a call to come in on a Tuesday, I believe, and to read through the first script and then make the changes and then take it home with us and then learn the whole thing. And so we did it live twice. We did it for the East Coast because of time and then for the West Coast. And we had to memorize all, never heard of a cue card at that point. It was so brand new, it was wonderful. It was not like going on a dark sound stage and you were stuck there all day to get two, two minutes of film. It was, things were happening. And I had had my own show at the same time on Channel 13, but that was you walked in, you did the show and you left. There was really very little preparation for me. And I sang and danced in that show. Anyway, <laughs> so we would go in and then most interesting part about it, of course, in the movies, you know, here's the camera in the movies, and here's the director sitting right next to it. So you could talk to the director over here, what he or he wants, how he wants this played, what he didn't like about the last rehearsal that you did, the read through, whatever it was, and you listen, and then he gave you the background. That's it, that's it. You see him doing this. So you know what you're doing right? Not so in TV. The director was sitting one a building away up in a room with all of the electronics over him and talking to us over a, a, a sound that we, we could get and to the floor director who then would tr tell us what, what was going on. And when you worked with a live show then, uh, if you missed the, the, the cue, if you missed the change in your clothes, if you, you missed it, it was there. You were going to see it for the rest of your life. So, but you would stop on rehearsal if they didn't know where to get the camera, how they could move these great big huge cameras around to the set. So we had a set alongside the old, old stage building that we were in and it was living room. And then the opening one, we had a big thing about the kitchen. So we had the kitchen and we had a place to eat and we washed dishes in the seat and all the rest. Well, it turned out that later on, uh, let's see, from the lady Grace, oh dear, I can't remember her name right now. Oh, she's so famous. She was the, um, the cook for uh, the Brown Derby, Grace Lawson. Grace Lawson, she did her shows out of that kitchen and actually cooked. But our first one was, it was a real kitchen, real water running, everything. And we weren't used to that, I will tell you. But what we, how we played it was Tuesday, we got the script, we worked on it in the morning. And remember, you could only use the children, the two little kids, you could only use them before a camera, um, for um, 20 minutes of uh, and only three hours 20, each 20 minutes. We, we ignored that. Don't tell anybody. We needed it, you know, and we were having fun. <laughs> anyway, so we would go over it. Then we'd find our position. Then we would worry about where we were with the camera and uh, back and forth. And then we'd do a run through. And then we would come back on Tuesday, the same Tuesday and they would have changed the script, fix this, fix that, and do another run through. And then they said, we'll see you on Thursday. I think those are the two days. Anyway, it was two days apart. So we would come out, come back the next, we'll say Thursday in the morning and we would do a run through. And then it was no, 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 no. That's not the way it works. That's not the, we have to do this. We have to change that. The clothes, the, the, the dress outfits are not there. We couldn't change, blah, 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 blah. So we do another run through. Okay, now remember, we only worked 22 minutes because the rest of it was commercials. So you only wrote a script for 22 minutes. 
Interestingly enough, Charlie Ruggles, which I'll, whom I'll speak about in a moment, uh, sometimes could not remember his lines. And how he remembered his lines was that he would get one word. If he could get that one word in the line, we'll say, well, that's an exclusive thing, dear. If that were, would have been his line, he would go, um, uh, ex, uh, exclu exclusive, uh, well, I don't know, Margaret. It would, uh, that would be an exclusive line, dear. And we would, so they took into account that he would spend time trying to find his lines. And we had two little kids who were wonderful. They were just great. They, they had their uh, right down to, and then it was me, and we each, we usually had a show that was all about us, and that's the way that they wrote it. Well, Mr. Ruggles himself, of course, was quite well known as, as this marvelous, I would say comedian, humorist, I think is what they use, because she was just so darling, so cute. And he would, he would go and when he would trigger this, figure this thing out. You know, he was adorable in, in the uh, bringing up, uh, bringing up father, the one with the leopard, bringing up daddy, bringing up daddy, uh, with Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant. And he came in the, the last half of the movie, and <laughs> he was this precise man. Of, he was funny. Funny. So he was funny with us, but it was much more of a believable father. Uh, he never gave us any instruction. He liked what we were doing. He was always positive. Erin O'Brien Moore, who played our mother, was a nervous wreck and adorable. She just knew that she was going to not do it. Um, and then they gave us commercials to do, live commercials. And usually they gave us, a, that's a minute, a live commercial usually on the show that was all about us. I don't know how that always happened. So anyway, you're standing there in front of the camera, which you're trained not to look at, right? However, when you do a commercial, you look right at the, at the camera. And as you're looking, you say, it's a mirror. The, the lens is a mirror back to you. And you go, oh, my hair is a mess. Oh, oh, I'm doing a commercial. <laughs> we would do the wildest commercials, and it was for Dr. Ross Dog Food. Fido knows best, woof. And, and we would actually go woof in the commercial, and then we would turn around and do this wonderful show about us and our family. There was never so much fun. It was so basic. And we decided, because nobody would tell us whether we had messed up a scene, it was always whether the camera hadn't worked, or you could get the boom mic over in time, or whatever that was. Oh, I'll tell you one, one wonderful one. I was out on a date in, the, in this show. I was out on a date, and my brother, who was just younger than I in the show, uh, was worried about me, just worried about me. So he would come, he was sitting there in the living room, and I had gone, we had the scene where I, I was out, and he's sitting there worried, he goes and looks out the door to see whether I am coming. And I, I, I look at him, and uh, <laughs> so he then looks up, this is how they're going to show the passing of time. He looks up on the mantel, and there is a clock sitting there with 7.30, I guess, was our date, right? And I had gone, and he's sitting there still. And we see the clock up there, we see the clock up there. And then we see the hands go around, and now it is 9.30. However, there was a small problem. <laughs> we couldn't get the camera in close enough to get a close-up of the clock. We were showing about this much of the clock, so the, the idea was to make the clock change. A burly hand from a, a worker on the set went in and turned it. <laughs> and you were wa watching the scene as this hand, this hairy hand, comes in and turns it to 9 or 9.30 and then leaves. <laughs> and of course, we're in hysterics because it's brand new TV. It's going to go out over the air. Unfortunately... 
Um, the, the series ended after a long, long time. That was a long period. As a matter of fact, I w was working on the, uh, I guess, for Tinkerbell at the time. I, I think I was working on another big project at the same time. You, you did that then. So, so anyway, uh, they took all of the uh, prints that they had. And the only way that they had a, to take a print or get on film to keep it going was to film what was happening for the early show. And they filmed it off of a camera with a regular movie camera. Very, very interesting. UCLA took all the, those shows to go over them and keep them for posterity. And unfortunately, I heard that there was a fire and all but four of those burned up. So you see the one, the Christmas show, which is evidently a favorite of people and uh, three others and I can't remember which ones because I've, I've really never seen the other ones. But so we don't have this, you could see it on YouTube, all of them. But it was a wonderful show. It was a lighthearted show. And it was a teaching show, really, in a way, of how people got along with each other. And it was a joy to work with everybody on that. And I went right from there to a big musical that they were doing at ABC on the same lot in another sound stage. And I worked uh, with that one and then went to Paramount from there. So, I mean, Fox from there. And then uh, it, it, it just was the time that you wanted to be part of it. If you really loved something, if you really loved it, uh, this, this is show business by the seat of the pants. And I have to tell you, well, you can tell the way I'm telling the story. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the crew couldn't have been dearer. That's all I can say. And the Razbacks who produced it, special people, really special people. So that's my tale a little bit about the Charlie Ruggles show, or it's all now, it's known as the Ruggles then. So see you later.